of a new feature that Hey everybody, I'm Michael. Thanks for watching my review of Super Mario RPG. We here at Remichael are going through things in mostly chronological order. We started with media in 1985, and we've been slowly working our way forward. The whole channel is about to get to 1992, but Ramin and I are ahead with video games specifically. We actually like to play through games when we give them scores, and it takes a while to play through JRPGs, so we don't mind if we're a bit ahead there while the other videos catch up. The last game we reviewed on the channel was Suikoden, so give that a shot if you want to check it out. But that's from 1995. What's the next game that I wanted to cover? Super Mario RPG from 1996. I was really looking forward to playing this game again. It had been years. I've always enjoyed this game a lot, but it's not one that I've returned to quite as often as many other RPGs. So I put the cartridge in my SNES and nothing. It isn't working. The SNES is fine, other games work. My Super Mario RPG cartridge is just broken, I guess. But good news, there's a new remake on Switch. I actually hadn't planned on buying the Switch version because, you know, I wanted to save some money. And I personally don't really care as much about graphics in a game. But I ended up being really glad that I did get the Switch version because it gave me plenty to talk about, especially in graphics, sound, and gameplay. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars was a really rare collaboration between Square and Nintendo and was originally released for the Super Nintendo, as I said, in 1996. It's a menu-style JRPG with some light platforming. The game is notable for the timed action commands in battle. More on that later. A note, this review contains light spoilers, but since the story of the game is not super important, I don't think that these spoilers should be that impactful for you when you play the game if you haven't played it already. Usually, story is one of the most important things for me in a JRPG. I often give Mario games a pass though because story is rarely as important in platformers or other action games. You'd think, since Mario RPG is an RPG, the story would be more important. For better or for worse, I feel like this game's story is not all that important. At the beginning of the game, Princess Toadstool has been kidnapped by Bowser yet again. Just as Mario rescues her, a giant sword falls out of the sky and into Bowser's castle, sending Mario, Toadstool, and Bowser all flying in different directions. It turns out, as the star fell, it destroyed the Star Road, which is a pivotal part of wishes in this world being granted. Mario and his friends need to collect all seven star pieces that were strewn about the world in order to repair the Star Road and allow wishes to be granted again. And that's pretty much the entire story. There are smaller stories in each area of the world, but there are very few themes that carry over throughout the game. Characters don't really grow or change much. Normally, I'd say that's a problem, but in the case of this game, I think it's fine. Not enough to give the story a full five points, but certainly it doesn't deserve anything less than a four. One little exception that I think is really funny though, so many story beats in this game basically require all of the characters, especially NPCs, to be really super dumb, or at least super unobservant. I don't want to give it away, but this is all especially evident in Tadpole Pond and Nimbus Land. So even though the story of this game is nothing special, the characters very much are special. Let's start with the heroes. Three of the playable characters in this game are characters that we've met before. Mario, Princess Toadstool, and Bowser. What makes Mario so fun in this one is that he's a silent protagonist who still gets to be really funny. If you've watched many of my JRPG reviews in the past, you know that I tend to not like silent protagonists, but seriously, Mario is hilarious. When somebody asks him a question, he does these elaborate pantomimes that are so funny. Sometimes characters know exactly what he's talking about, and sometimes they don't get it at all. It works so well. 
Princess Toadstool is mostly the princess that we know from other games until she actually joins the party. She's often kind of the MVP of the game, and she will stand up for herself against Bowser. Bowser, by the way, is also really fun in this game. It's fun to see him struggling with having lost his castle, but constantly trying to look tough in front of the rest of the party. The two new playable characters in this game are Mallow and Gino. Mallow is a tadpole who is able to control the weather. Mallow is maybe the only playable character to have a bit of an arc. He slowly gains a little bit of confidence in himself as the game progresses. Gino is a doll that has been possessed by a celestial star spirit and kind of becomes the de facto leader of the party. He's also completely overpowered in battles most of the time. He doesn't grow or change at all in the story, but neither do most of the rest of the characters. There are a lot of villains in this game. Most are just kind of one and done like the various weapons, Clay Morton, Bowyer, Spiritovich, and the Axum Rangers. They're all at least fine, but Bowyer is fun because of his personality and the mechanics of his boss battle, and the Axum Rangers are fun for being a blatant Power Rangers knockoff. A few are more regular thorns in Mario's side, like Croco and Belome, but then we get to my favorite villains, Booster, Johnny, and Valentina. Booster is a selfish, childish jerk, but you sort of get the sense that he's not a bad guy deep down. His selfishness does cause some real problems when it comes to how he treats the princess, but if he had any empathy and emotional intelligence in him, he'd probably not treat people the way he does. Johnny is a pirate through and through. When you best him in combat, he's a gracious loser and then comes to your aid when you need his help later. Valentina is drag fabulous. Look at that bird on her head. <laughs> She's just so cartoonishly evil, it's delightful. Side notes, subvillains through her brief arc, Dodo and Birdo, are also great. Dodo is great for being the henpecked subordinate, and Birdo is an actual canonically trans icon. She's so fun. The final villain of the game, Smithy, is good but not great. He'd be better if we had any interaction with him before we fight him, or if at least other characters told us what he was like. The NPCs in Mario RPG are a little weaker, but most are pretty good. A lot of them are just in there for color and moving the plot forward, like Raz and Rainy, the Mushroom Kingdom's Chancellor, and most of the NPCs in Nimbus Land. But then you have actually fun characters like the Frog Sage, formerly Frog Fuchsius in the SNES version. He plays the wise man who tries to make himself look way more mystical than he actually is very well. Gaz is an absolute delight in the time that we get to spend with him. Most of the inhabitants of Moleville are incredibly charming. And then, of course, we have basically Guy Fieri, Cinder Toad. As I said at the beginning, graphics are usually not a big deal for me in a game. To delve into that a little more deeply, graphics aren't a big deal for me as long as they're passable and as long as they're not trying too hard to be something that's beyond the game's capabilities at the time. The original SNES version of the game's graphics are absolutely fine. A little chunky in the pixels, but the whole game is so cutesy and storybookish that I don't mind that at all. The remix graphics really are fantastic though. They're so clean and polished, but they don't lose the charm of the SNES version's look. There are also a handful of new added cutscenes, and all of those are effective and cute. If graphics are an important thing for you when you're considering what game to play, the remake should be good enough for you, I think. The design of this game is overall great. The character designs are just pretty good, though. The recurring characters from earlier Mario properties are all excellent. They translate very well to this art style. Of the new characters specific to this game, Mallow is great, but Gino is only pretty good. I wish his dullness translated a little bit better somehow to his tiny polygonal form. The villains are pretty hit or miss. What is Belome? What am I looking at here? But like a lot of the rest are actually pretty good. When it comes to NPCs, a lot of them are variations on toads. So that means that many of their designs are pretty bland, except for Cinder Toad. He's ready for flavor down. But the designs are generally interesting and they're typically not sexist. Otherwise in design, the towns are great. They all feel different and the music, which we'll talk about in a second, really helps with that. The dungeons are also all distinct, which helps so 
much in an RPG that has some light platforming. The monsters are all cute as heck. A dog in shoes, a rat with gloves, so cute. All right, sound. This is a tricky category. Overall, it's great, but then we nitpick the music. Yoko Shimomura, as usual, is brilliant. Her compositions are excellent, but if we compare the new orchestrations for the remake with the original SNES version, I feel like a lot of them actually kind of fall flat. They're all good on their own, but if you compare the new orchestrations to the original ones, I think the originals mostly have so much more goofy, charming character to them. But I also get it, modern audiences might not want to hear these bleeps and bloops coming from their Switch. The sound effects are all cute as heck though. Gameplay is the category with the most important differences in the remake versus the SNES version as I see it. One huge change is right in the opening moments of the game. You can choose between normal mode and breezy mode. From what I understand, normal mode is somewhat easier than the SNES version of the game. I've heard people say that the original version of the game is easy enough, but you know what? I struggled with it as a kid. If you have a simple JRPG like Mario RPG that could very easily be a kid's first RPG, it could be a gateway to more complicated, involved, and difficult games. It makes sense to make it pretty easy. I love that the breezy mode exists for the younger gamers who might pick this up, or for the game reviewers who only review games as a fun side project when they're not busy with their day jobs or the rest of their lives. One thing that is weaker about the gameplay in the remake, though, is movement and platforming. Mario RPG is an isometric game. Everything is at an angle to help immerse you in a 3D feel. In the SNES version of the game, when you pressed up on the D-pad, Mario actually moved northeast. This took a little getting used to, but it was fine. In the remake, when you press up, Mario actually goes up or straight north. Unfortunately, everything else is built on the diagonal. This makes platforming incredibly awkward. There's a section of the game where Mario has to climb and jump between various beanstalks, and it was one of the hardest parts of the game for me. I mentioned earlier that this game is known for its timed action commands in battle. In a battle, if you press the right button at just the right time, you can deal more damage with a physical or magical attack, or you can lessen or even completely negate damage from an enemy. In the original SNES game, this was difficult but doable. In the remake, this feels so much easier actually, partially because there's a new feature where the game tells you when to press the button the first few times you run into that button prompt. Also new, a gauge in the bottom left of the battle screen keeps track of how many successful action commands you've completed. With each successful action command, the gauge goes up. When it reaches 100%, you can perform a triple move based on the three characters in your party at that time. The triple moves are all extra strong attacks or moves that have special defensive characteristics. This didn't exist at all in the SNES version of the game, and it's a cute and fun addition. The next quality of life improvement in the remake is the ability to switch party members out mid-battle. You can even do this when a character has fallen in the battle. It's so handy and it does a lot to lower the difficulty of the game in a good way, I think. In general, battling in this game, especially the remake, feels great. There's just the right number of battles, and you can see them on the screen, so you can usually avoid them if you want to. Absolutely zero grinding is necessary, which is something that I love. Overall, battles equals good. A tough thing in most JRPGs, minigames. They're usually the worst part of the game. In Super Mario RPG, they're Fine. Some of them like the Midas River Falls, the Midas River Barrel Jumping, and the various Todovsky songs are even pretty fun. Booster Hill and the Paratrooper Climbing suck, though. You're required to play a lot of these minigames, which isn't great, but most of them really aren't that bad. So a few last minute things for gameplay. Cameras of five, learning curve is a five, it does a good job teaching you new mechanics as they're applied. The difficulty is a five. It's easy, like I said, which is a very good thing for me, and there are no bugs that I've found. 
At the time of the SNES version's release, game rankings aggregated critical scores to be an 84%. The formula of my picky scores spat out a 97%. I felt that this game deserved a 90%. If you average the formula score and my score, this game gets a 93% or an A. This is where Mario RPG's score fits in with the ranking of other games. So should you pick up this game? It depends on what you're looking for in a game. Do you want a deep story, complex characters, challenging gameplay with lots of interlocking systems? If that's what you want, this game probably isn't for you. But if you're looking for a cute, fun, breezy romp, this might be the game for you. If you want to introduce a younger gamer to their first JRPG, this might be the perfect game, especially if they already love Mario. Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining for this quick review. I hope you liked the gameplay footage that I got in there. I finally got an Elgato I've been meaning to for years, but this means that there'll be more gameplay footage in my reviews coming up and possibly even streaming. I might experiment with that a little bit here and there. Probably not gonna do a ton of it though. So yeah, please give this video a like if you liked it or please give it a pity like if you didn't like it. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any different opinions on anything of this game or if there's anything that you especially wanna tell me because I love reading your comments when you've got them. To this side is a video that YouTube thinks you'll like, so check that out if you want. Up there's the button that you can use to subscribe to our channel. We put out reviews of video games and and music and a couple other things of media here and there. And yeah, I think that's about it. Maintain your groovy selves. <laughs> <laughs>